got a <clears throat> exciting Sunday morning today. I look forward to sharing with you. Give me about 15 minutes. Uh, just about 15 minutes. It's a really exciting time this week. My friend from uh, Vanguard University came. He and his wife were here this week on Thursday night. His name is Tom Bonner. His wife's name Connie. And they've been serving out on the mission field for about 15 years. And uh, we've been supporting them for uh, most of that time. And he was talking to me. And after the service on Thursday night, we met out in the hallway. And uh, Tom says to me, hey, uh, uh, Tommy, when are you going to come out to the Philippines, man, on a mission trip? And I said, absolutely. So we were talking and we're sharing. And I think uh, he and Pastor Danny Jr. have already got the p conversation going. And uh, so here we are talking and sharing. And then he says, hey, and second thought, he says, uh, you know, Tom, he says, uh, when, you come, when you come on a missions trip next summer, I have another idea. He says, I don't want you to go to the Philippines. He says, I want you to go to this other country where preaching and proclaiming the gospel is against the law. I said, wait a second, bro. I said, what do you mean you want me to go to another country where preaching and proclaiming the gospel is against the law? Brother, I got a wife and kids. I need to come back alive, man. And uh, he says, yeah, I, you know, I, I think it would be better if you went there and you could preach uh, in, in, in uh, uh, the settings that they allow for the gospel to be preached. This is basically your home. He says, but beyond that, you know, you could get thrown in jail. And he told me the guy that's the house church leader there has been thrown in jail. And so they do throw people in jail. And he says, uh, would you like to go? And I said, you know, I said, um, I was looking at him and uh, out the corner of my eye, I saw Anthony Laguna come in. I said, yes, I would like to go. And I don't plan to go alone. I'm going to take Anthony Laguna with me. <laughs> come on, somebody. Give Anthony a hand clap, boy. The, uh, I, he and I have already talked. I said, if I go, I ain't going alone. I get thrown in jail. I need somebody to bail me out, man. Come on now. But missions, missions. And we are going. Whether we're going to the Philippines or these other countries, we are going um, next summer. And it's a really exciting time. Absolutely. So today, Mission Sunday. You know, it's really about having a burden. It's really about having a burden. It's really about having the heart of Jesus. It's really about having the heart of God. And you know, when you have a burden for something, you care. When you have a burden for something, you care. You do something about it. You don't allow it to stay as it is. You, you jump in there. You get your hands dirty. You get your feet wet. And, and, and you get busy. It's about realizing that there is something that we can all do to disciple the nations, to influence the cause of Christ around the world. That's what I love about the missions team in Japan. And this morning I was watching a video that they posted yesterday about the service and, and they went live on Facebook and, and you could see our people from TC participating, Pastor Danny Jr. preaching. And so it's really exciting. There is something that we can all do to influence the cause of Christ. People for the cause of Christ, even nations for the cause of Christ, cities for the cause of Christ. There is something that we can all do. It was exciting last week on Sunday morning to see Sister Rubia, Sister Rubia and her husband from El Salvador and the ministry in El Salvador and church planting in El Salvador. And you know what's interesting? Her husband spoke to me right after, right after the service. Sister Rubia received the Hermano Pablo Award for evangelism and missions outreach around the world. And her husband tells me, hey, Brother Tommy, he says, uh, you know, he says, I really felt like God changed my heart and turned my heart to my wife and her ministry and the call that God had for her. And he says, and he says, honestly, my wife is like, like that David and Goliath story. Here's this huge task, this huge challenge. And here was my wife going with nothing else but the word of God and the love of God for God's people. And she obeyed God. And he said, I, as a husband, I supported her in that. I encouraged her in that. And I decided that if this is what God God's called her to do God's called us to do this as a family and my heart got in line with her heart and I have been behind her the whole way she and this now this is something that we do together it was exciting to hear from her husband on what God is doing you know missions is also a part of what we do here it's at the heart of our church 
It's at the heart of our church. If you notice what we're doing in Okinawa and El Salvador and many other countries, also what we're doing here locally, you know, it was exciting. We had this Love Santa Ana event and we did all that painting and tree fixing or tree planting and fixing fences and, and painting the center in Santa Anita uh, Park area right here off of First and, and, uh, uh, First and uh, New Hope. Is it First and New Hope or First and, and Harbor? First and, first and Figueroa or right down the street, Santa Anita Park, uh, that in, in really close by. So there we are doing all that, and then Pastor Lee has a conversation with a, a community organizer there, and, and Pastor Lee tells us about this conversation. And the conversation goes something like this. Basically, the, the, the organizer there, the community worker there, was really amazed by everything that was happening. All the people that were being mobilized, money and resources and, and helping hands, literally, like helping hands, like paintbrushes, right? And uh, long stem extensions and up on ladders and Josiah and I were there up on ladders together and, and doing all this stuff. So it was really exciting. But the individual had mentioned to Pastor Lee how grateful he was, how thankful he was that people would come out to Santa Anita Park, a place that, that had been forgotten, a place that many have never been to, have never seen, and, mo and, and most folks just drive by on a daily, it's kind of tucked away there at the end of a street, you don't even know, it's kind of hidden. And so he was so grateful, he was so thankful, he was just saying, look at everything that's being done, all this resource and, resources and all this help being mobilized here for this community in this part. He was so grateful because he really felt like in many ways the city as a whole and people in general had just forgotten about Santa Anita Park. And you know what the heart of mission says? The heart of mission says that Templo Calvario has not forgot about Santa Anita and the Santa Anita Park area. Come on somebody, give the Lord a hand clap. These are our people. These are our people. This is our city. So whether it's here, whether it's near, or whether it's far away, missions is at the heart of Tempo Galvario Church. And you know what the brother mentioned? He mentioned, you know what he mentioned? He mentioned, hey, what about a toy drive? Wouldn't a toy drive be absolutely amazing? And he mentioned that to Pastor Lee. Pastor Lee uh, mentioned that to me and I, pre pre uh, I presented that to our lead team and our, and our life group leadership team. And you know, at the, immediately as it slipped out of my mouth, people on that leadership team for TC and our 11 o'clock service and our, our, our life group leadership team jumped on it and they said absolutely you know we haven't figured out all the details we don't even know how or where or where or when or things of that nature but we know what it is that we need to do and we are committed to influencing the nations here near and far people from all around the world don't care we don't care where they come from or who they are that God loves them. God has a purpose and a plan for their life. And doing so is absolutely essential, beginning with right where we're at. Open your Bibles, and just the, the next seven minutes that I have left, open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. Open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. I want to walk you through this story of the Apostle Paul. It's a story about the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Paul is really thanking people for caring. The Apostle Paul is thanking people for having a burden. The Apostle Paul is thanking a church, thanking brothers and sisters who essentially have had his back while he was in ministry, while he was serving, while he was laboring, while he was proclaiming the gospel, influencing the nations for Christ. That's what this scripture is about. Look at what the Apostle Paul says. Basically, the Apostle Paul is telling the church and, and, and Philippi, the Macedonians, Thank you for having my back. Thank you. That's what he's saying. Look at what he says. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. The Apostle Paul says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. He says, Here you guys are doing it again. Here you guys are blessing me again. Here you guys are helping me again. Look at what he says. 
He says, though you surely did care, but you lacked the opportunity. In other words, there were, we, we know, we, he, Paul's Paul saying, I know you had my back. I know you weren't aware. But when the need arose and you were asked to give and you were asked to do something, you were asked to cover me. The Apostle Paul said, boom, you jumped at it. You seized the moment. As soon as a word slipped out of somebody's mouth, they said, yes, we're going to do it. Come on, somebody. And then he says in verse 13, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned and whatever said I am to be content. The Apostle Paul says, I know what it is to be abased or to have essentially nothing and I know how to abound. I know what, what it means to, to ride the wave and be up on top. He says, everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer in need. And it, this is what he has determined, verse 13. So in other words, he's known to go, he's known how to go with plenty and a lot, and he's known how to go with little bit or close to nothing, but he's known how to continue to be steadfast and immovable in the call of Christ that God's called him to do. And this is what he says in verse 13. He says, he knows that I can do, he says in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That at the end of the day, whether we have a lot or whether we have a little, whether we have everything and we're overflow status, or whether we are such need that we are lacking and we're barely making it, the Apostle Paul says to you and he says to me, I know that you can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens you, no matter what it is. No matter where you find yourself, no matter what the challenge may be. And then verse 14 says, Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Verse 14, verse 15. Now you Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but only you. He's basically saying, hey, when I started off in this ministry, when I left where, where the place where you were at, there were a whole lot of folks supporting me. Not a whole lot of people were, were able to do anything for me at that time. He says, but you did, you gave, you cared, you had my back. That's what he's saying. He's saying you were there for me. And then look at what he says, not that I seek a gift, or excuse me, verse 16, for even in Thessalonians you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek a gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. He says, verse 18, indeed I have all and abound, I am full having received from Epaphroditus. Of the things that you sent me is a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And what the Apostle Paul is saying, man, you guys have blessed me, you guys have ministered to me, you guys have helped me, you guys have served me. And he says, you know what? I know that in, in your giving, you're also being blessed. And I know that in your giving, it's, it's rising up to heaven as a worship, as an offering, as a sacrifice to God. And God is pleased with your faithfulness. Look at where the Apostle Paul is writing from. You know why he said that I am full and that I am blessed and that I'm encouraged right now from the gift? Because he was in jail not Yale but jail my grandmother told a couple people my tios and tias when I was at Yale University that I was in jail and they all freaked out boy <laughs> they said not Tommy he was the good one <laughs> she says si sí, así hay anda en jail estudiando <laughs> Hey, the Apostle Paul was in jail. He was incapable of helping himself. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. He was unable to help himself in jail. The, 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 the guards, the, the Roman society didn't sustain you. The, the, the government didn't sustain you. If people from around the community didn't give you anything to eat, you could very, very uh, seriously wind up dead. So the Apostle Paul is saying, look, I'm unable to, to make it. I'm unable to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm unable to survive on my own. I needed your help and you were there and you have refreshed me. And it's from jail that the Apostle Paul continues to proclaim the gospel 
of Jesus Christ. And he has been refreshed by the church. Let me wrap it up here because we have something really important to do. Look at what he says. Verse 19. And he promises something here. He says, <coughs> And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. And here's what he says that giving church. Here's what he tells the church that has his back. Here's what he tells the church that is helping him when he is unable to, to, to do, have what he needs to stay alive, to preach the gospel, to proclaim Christ even from behind bars. He is on a mission and he's on the mission field to Rome. He's got a date with destiny to proclaim the gospel to the Roman emperor. It would essentially cost him his life, but he's so grateful. He promises the church, God will provide for you because you have been providing for me. Missions. The ministry is rooted in missions. This ministry is rooted in missions. And that mission, vision, is to influence the nations, disciple the people around the world, here, near, and far. And that's what, we, that's what we strongly believe as a church. This is a powerful example of a church, a Macedonian church that was committed to influencing the nations for Christ and helping the Apostle Paul proclaim the gospel of Jesus this New Testament church had the Apostle Paul's back. And, and essentially, they gave. They did something about it. They saw the need. Here's a story, and I'm going to wrap it up right here in my two minutes that I have left. Here's a story that I want to share with you. Tom Bonner, my friend from Vanguard University, came. He and his wife were here. And they shared a story, they, should, they, told, they told a story, and uh, they showed a picture up on the screen of a little girl that was 11 years old in the Philippines. Where they're at is predominantly, they've moved to this area, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Tom saw a story in the newspaper. He was flipping through the newspaper, they were living near the capital, and he was teaching in the seminary, and, and missions, and and uh, <clears throat> equipping pastors for the work of the Lord. He saw this story of an 11-year-old little girl. And as he read the story, the story said that this 11-year-old little girl really took her own life out of hope, out of the hopelessness and out of desperation. She wanted to go back to school. She dreamt of going back to school. She really saw, you know, going back to school is, is, is this absolutely necessary and essential for getting out of poverty and rising out of poverty and having, this, having a future and, and having some possibility of making it. But at 11 years old, her dad told her, you know, there's no money. We don't have the $2 to pay for you to go to school. We don't have the two dollars to pay for you to go back to school, so you're not going to be able to go. And time and time again, there was never the two dollars that they were needed, and they live in this little shack in this little hut, and so there's no two dollars. And finally, this 11-year-old little girl, out of hopelessness, did the unthinkable. And here Tom was, he was sitting, he was reading that paper and, and Tom says that essentially something struck his heart. He had a burden. He knew he needed to do something. He knew this wasn't right. We cannot sit by, stand by, watch and allow this to happen. And so what did he do? He closed his paper, newspaper. He bought a ticket. He went down to the south part of the Philippines to find that family. And when he found that family, he proclaimed Christ to the family and he he went to that school and, he, and he, he knew he needed to do something so he adopted that school and to date he's adopted about 80 kids to go to school and you want to know what, what is so amazing so wonderful this church is rooted in missions and I told that to Tom when he came I said hey bro I said you know this church is hardcore about missions right 
He says, yeah, I know that. I said, I'm serious, bro. This, this church is the real deal, brother. We don't play. It's like we take it to the street because we care. And we, don't, we never forget where we came from, where we were when God found us. And we do things. We do something about it. He says, I know, man. I believe you, Tom. You guys have been supporting me all this time. Tom shared that story. He broke out a little bracelet. And, and he said, hey, if you help me, you know, with these kids, please buy one of these bracelets. I'll be back at the back. And these bracelets go to help the kids and the pastors that serve those kids in that community for those 80 kids in that school. And he had this box. It was about this big. About that big. Full of bracelets. Packed with bracelets. About $20 a pop. I bought one for my wife. I said, here you go, baby. You look beautiful in this bracelet right here. It was her birthday, too. Come on, give her a hand clap. It was her birthday. She got a bracelet for her birthday, boy. What's up? Bracelet and Disneyland. <laughs> oh, that lit. Treat them right. Right? Treat them right. Amen. You got to work for that. Work for your love, buddy. Sow the seed. You know what our church did? Tempo Calvario, rooted in missions. You know what we did? Right after the service was over, I was back there hanging out with Tom. And I began to see those bracelets disappear one by one by one by one. At the end of the night, we looked down at that basket. I think he had two or three bracelets left of a, of a, of a plastic band that was jam-packed. Templo Calvario, today is the day. We get to do that again. We get to make a commitment. We get to let our missionaries know, just like the Macedonian church, let the Apostle Paul know, we have your back. We have your back again and again and again. Anywhere and everywhere around the world that you are discipling the nations for Jesus Christ. TC has your back. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for Tom Bonner and Connie and many of our missionaries that are hardcore like that. Amen.